Okay, everyone. English toffee. The easy way to do it. No thermometers, no nothing. Just, I've been practicing, and this is the way it's got to be done to make it come out right for me. Have your roasted almonds. Roast some almonds at about uh, 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Take them out, let them cool down, chop them up. Have them ready to go. Have a greased pan ready to go. On a stove top, if I, I got an electric stove top, I use four and a half on it. Yours is going to be different, but uh, it takes practice. You got to figure it out. I melt one stick of butter and about two tablespoons of Cairo syrup. When I put the stick in there, I just pour Cairo syrup just over to cover the top of the butter, and that's about two tablespoons. Once that melts down, pretty much almost melted all down. Then you're going to have um, three quarters cup total of sugar. Okay, um, so basically it's a quarter cup of brown sugar, which I got underneath here. Then I filled it up to three quarters of the way with white sugar, so I got three quarters of a cup of sugar total. And a lot of recipes calls for the vanilla at the very end, but the sudden change of temperature sometimes messes up your candy and it makes it separate. It's very, very sensitive. So I put my vanilla right in here with my sugar before I even start. Okay, butter's melted. Okay, well, syrup's melted. Dump the butter and uh, sugar and vanilla in there. You can see the layer of, uh, of brown sugar at the bottom. So my recipe calls for white and brown sugar, which I think it gives it a, a better taste. And then have, have some um, bacon soda ready. Calls for half a teaspoon, but when I'm ready, I just grab a pinch and throw it in. It's a lot easier than trying to jack with a with the teaspoon. So just it's not that critical. Just get a good pinch in your hand, and toss it in there, and you'll see that step here as soon as this melts down. Now at this point, from this point where it's pretty much melted, you're combining your sugars. Okay, from that point, I'm gonna set my timer to 12 minutes okay because that's about how long I found out that it takes when it's about ready so basically you just stick around here you constantly stir it a little bit I do anyway some people say you can let it sit but I think if you let it sit too much it separates and it's not good um, and it ruins it but I always constantly stir it so it stays all mixed together because the fat from the butter and the sugar naturally wants to separate, but if you keep it stirred, well, one, it keeps it from burning, two, it keeps it from separating. So anyway, so we'll be doing this for about 12 minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll, uh, actually, I'll, I'll show you here uh, after about six minutes, halfway through what it looks like. Okay, it's been about three minutes, three and a half, four minutes maybe. And this is what it's starting to look like. It starts to boil, and when it starts to boil, it starts to foam up and look all goobery. And when you pull your spoon through it, you'll see it kind of wants to separate a little bit. You kind of, for a second, you see the bottom of the pan. So you can kind of tell that consistency. But, and you just, uh, it's going to boil here for a little while longer, and uh, make sure you just keep it stirred up really good so it don't burn the bottom. Oh, by the way, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Uh, so one of the reasons why I don't like using a thermometer, I'm not saying it's wrong to use one. I mean, that, most people swear by them, but uh, I, do this, I do this with my peanut brittle too. But like right now, uh, obviously we haven't been long enough cooking, but uh, when you lift the spoon and let the candy drip, see how it's just dripping? Well, when the candy has reached a crystal uh, or the hard ball, stage where it's a it'd be a candy and set and set up real crisp then that there string there that's dripping will it would it will, it'll form a web and that's just a drip but you'll see a web here later on I'll show you okay six of our 12 minutes have ticked off the clock now watch this as I pull through see how you see more of the bottom it's starting to thicken up 
When you do that, you see that it kind of stays separated for a second. So this is thickening up. Keep your sides scraped down and just keep moving it around so the bottom of it don't scorch and give you too strong of a burnt taste. Most English toffee, part of the flavor is from the from a slightly um, burnt flavor, but it if you get it too much, it's too strong. So you got to make sure this sucker don't really scorch and burn. And you'll know when that's happening because you'll every time you do this, you'll see smoke coming off the bottom of it. That means it's uh, it's too hot. You're cooking too hot, or uh, you know, and it's starting to burn. So and then you get that real strong candy flavor, and it it, it kind of ruins it if you ask me. But anyway. All right, let me see if this thing is uh, starting to form a web yet. I don't think it will uh, yet. But, uh, yeah, it's still just dripping. No webs yet, so we can keep going a little bit longer. It's still looking nice and goobery. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I don't know if you could tell, but it is pretty much, you could barely see the web coming off there. So it is at the candy stage. Um, see that puff of smoke? It's time to get it off. So let's turn off our heat. We're going to throw a pinch of this in here and we're going to stir it really hard. And it's going to foam up. And then you got to get it out of this pan real quick. You're not going to see this part because I can't do this at the same time I film. Sorry about that blank section there, but I had to get it poured out here on the cookie sheet real quick. But once you pour that uh, baking soda in, you, you whisk it really hard, it foams up a little bit, and then you pour it out onto your, your um, cookie sheet, and that's going to um, start to dry, or start to cool down. When it cools down, it'll crisp up, and you have your toffee. Uh, the only step after that is you let this cool for a little bit. And I forgot to tell you to also have uh, some chips ready. A lot of people use candy bars, uh, which I think are the best, Hershey's chocolate bars. You lay them on the top, and then they melt themselves. You spread them out, and then you add your nuts on top of that. Wow, I'm using what I got today, which is some semi-sweet morsels and some milk chocolate morsels. I mixed them because you don't want to all swim my sweet because it's, well, to me, it's too strong. Anyway, I'll show you that step here in a minute. Another thing real quick, before I commit my um, chocolate and, and, and almonds uh, on the candy, um, I make sure the candy, I, I want to make sure that the candy is going to be, uh, come out to the candy, the candy stage and not be, uh, you know, too chewy. So if it crisps up, when I clean the, when I put water in the, the pot, the candy hardens. If it's hard and crispy, those chunks, like right there, it's hard and crispy. So I know that candy's gonna set up hard and crispy. Um, so then I know I can add my chocolate and nuts and um, I know I'll have a good good candy and, and not, not a chewy batch of, of chewy candy. So, because if, if that happens, I mean, you didn't cook it long enough, so. All right, I'm letting that cool down a little bit more. All right, this outside edge just cooled down quicker. I'm tapping on it. It's going to harden up for sure. Candy, I'm good. The middle is still real soft. You see how it dimples? It's still too soft to put the chocolate on yet. So it stays hot for quite a while. So let's wait and let it cool another minute or so. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just put all the chocolate goodness on top. Okay, and so what we're going to do is when these suckers get all nice and shiny, that means they're melted and we can spread them out. So, we're going to let the heat from the toffee melt the candy a little bit. Alright, I don't know if you can tell, but 
the morsels are starting to look really glossy so they're starting to melt from the heat of the toffee and then we're just gonna start spreading them out and cover the whole thing evenly with all this chocolate okay this is pretty much all covered nice and even doesn't matter how it looks because it's all going to get covered up it's going to all get covered up by these toasted almonds and we're going to spread this all out on top nice and evenly everywhere and then you're just going to pat them down into the chocolate so they end up stuck to it. And then when you uh, break it all up the candy and into pieces, it, uh, the nuts will stay on there. So I'm just pushing them down right into the chocolate. Okay, once they're all pressed down on there, okay, all right, that's that's it. Uh, that's a simple way to make it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it in to the refrigerator here and make some room for it. I'm going to slide it right in here in the fridge for about 10 minutes to let it cool down. And that's it. Uh, like I said, the most critical part was to take that candy off if you see a puff of smoke come off the bottom. It, that, that's right when it's finished. So um, get that baking soda in there, whip it up real quick, get it on your pan. That's why you guys, I had to set the phone down for a minute, so sorry about that. But I hope this helped. Um, like I said, I've done this. I screwed it up many times. Um, don't don't ever put the vanilla in when at, at the end of the t candy stage when you when you're putting the the, the baking soda in because the con the quick cool down of it the candy will separate it and it ruins it. I've ruined it many times. Get that vanilla in there with the sugar when you're melting down everything at the same time. That is probably the most critical key to making it come out right. I hope this helped. Um, all right. Later.